The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good day from TFNN. Welcome to the April 24th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. How about we have an extraordinary one? And of course, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I am absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. We'll take a look at whatever it is you uh, want some additional eyes on. Of course, if you can't call in, we've got you covered there, too. You can let those fingers do the walking. You can send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, just put radio show question in, in the Tiger's Den. Well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network, I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, the Dow off 51 points, 26.605 is print. S&P down about 6 points, 29.27. Uh, so we've got kind of a mixed market here because you've got the Russell to the upside, really flat, one point. Not flat when we take a look at the semis. They're up 1% or 16 buck runies. Transports are up three quarters of a percent or 81 points out there. Spot volatility is up 7%. Trading out at 13.16. Gold is up six. Uh, I'm sorry. Gold is up nearly five bucks. Silver up 12 pennies. 12 pennies. Leading the charge dollar wise, the upside it is Domino's Pizza up 17 bucks, a little over six percent. Silicon Laboratories up 13 bucks. SAP is up 13 bucks. Burlington Stores 13. To the downside is iRobot. Uh, six million shares, 21 percent, and 27 buckaroonies to the downside. Right now, trade out at 103. Northrop Grumman. North Northrop Grumman down about 13 bucks, a little over 4%. Mercado Libre up 12 and change. That's 2.5%. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at and what you wanted to look at. Peter and the Tigers Den wanted me to just kind of give an overview, specifically with regard to the gold contract and utilizing uh, Fibonacci expansions and contractions. So we're just kind of saying, hey, as I look at this chart, we just start with a blank naked chart out there. You know, what would I be looking for? And so the first thing with regard to contractions are really pretty easy. Now, when we're looking at a contraction, well, actually, let's let's talk about, yeah, let me do that. Let's talk about contractions, and we go to expansions real quickly. Um, so when, when I take a look at expansion or contractions, I'm trying to go from a swing point low to a swing point high. So if we really take a look at the current gold contract, I would start from the lowest swing point, which is back here on the trading day of August the 16th. And then I would go from there up to the high. And the high that we're using here was the high from February 20th, 1356. By the way, that low was 1189.30. And what we would see, let me just move this data box right over here. Uh, the contraction now is on the right-hand side. So we're picking out the swing points. We're, we're kind of like reading lower left to upper right out here. And what we can see what the gold contract did if we were using these as the swing points, and we really should, Peter, use these as the as the larger swing points in this subset of uh, data that we have out here. This would say that price found uh, support at about the 0 0.382 retracement level. The way that I look at retracements and or expansions is I just think of myself as getting on an elevator. And you hop on the elevator, you're out there with multiple people, and the 0 0.382 level is the first floor. And at that 0 0.382 level, that is where some 
people, some traders, uh, will go ahead and get off. Others may get on. Now, the first move down to that level was a prior swing point out here uh, that was uh, down in the January 24th level. I am against, but but it's just, just I'm speaking on behalf of myself. I am against just using Fibonacci numbers as places to go ahead and place your trade out there. And, and here's, the, here's the example. Let me just delete this large one. So by the way, with regard to this, this would say, since gold right now is trading below the 0.382 retracement, its next target level would be 12.53. Now look, we can use other swing points out here. So I can use the next one maybe that I would go to from a contraction standpoint. Maybe it would be right here. Is this wrong? And when I say right here, I'm referring to 11.13, that low all the way up to the high. And you'll see that we're at the point. 0.618 area. Um, so yeah, it's made a 0.618 retracement of that. But what what would tell you, and I, I'd use this as just a kind of a speaking to myself out here, what would tell me uh, that using that swing point, meaning November 13th is the right thing to do versus using August 16th. Then there's if somebody knows the answer to that, call in, please, and tell me. It's, again, it's just another swing point. You're trying to understand, you know, where's this contraction uh, taking, uh, you know, looking at. If we just use, for example, 0.6, take a look at this nice move, certainly off of the August uh, lows out here in 2018, making higher highs, lower, uh, um, higher lows, higher highs out there. And so as this was making a top, you wouldn't have known it if you were having a, a natural buy order in at the 0.618 retracement. What I'm referring to is the low on February 14th to the high out here on February 20th. And that was at 13.28. Uh, clearly, you know, that didn't stop it. And yet at the 0.618 retracement level on the trading day of February 27th, price stopped there, stopped right there. So again, what I like, now let's take a look at expansions. How do I look at expansions out here? Really the same uh, kind of way. I'm going from lower left to upper right out here. So if I want to take a look at different expansions between swing points, let's just take a look at things right now. Let's take, and so what I'm referring to is I'm going to come from, let me get the, my expansion tool out here. Here's my Fibonacci expansion. I'm going to use from lower left out here on March 7th, and I move this all the way up here to the high on February, I'm, I'm, I apologize, March the 25th. And we can see that price is at about the 1.272 expansion level. It's a 1.272. Should we buy? We can show a 1.272, and we already showed you 1.618 retracement level. Mm, well, I don't know. If you, if you don't hold this level, you go down to 1260. Uh, in the uh, Fibonacci expansion area. Um, what we don't do, what I don't do is I don't go from, and I'm not saying anybody was doing this, I don't, I wouldn't use expansions by going from, let's say this low out here on April 4th and then to going backwards, right? So, you know, coming, coming back, let's say to that swing point out here on March 25th, that's just, that is not the proper use of trying to identify expansions. You're always going from an expansion, you know, a swing point low, such as even in this case here, here's another expansion that we can use, and that would be using this swing point from April 4th to the high out here on April 10th. And there you can see you're at about the 1.6 way, or yesterday it was at about the 1.618 expansion. So how do we use these? How do we put all this together with some kind of some type of trading strategy. And let's discuss that when we come back from this break. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Dow's off 53. S&P is off about five. We're taking a look at gold. The first segment, we were taking a look at uh, Fibonacci contractions and expansions out there. When I started uh, when I started learning technical analysis, you need to understand, in 2006, I would look at a chart. I couldn't tell you what in the Sam Heck and that it meant out there. Now it's my palette. Now it's my artwork with regard to the patterns and the tools that we place on there. And one of the first things that I learned, Peter, everybody else, was uh, uh, Fibonacci volume as well. Because obviously I got uh, 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 into, I began my technical analysis journey by attending a master trader course with uh, Tom all those years ago. And um, and one of the great tools out there if you is on the Ensign Windows software. And it has something I believe is called Pesavento Patterns. I think that was the tool. If it's not that, it's there's there's a way to just automatically turn on. Um, and eSignal's got something similar. I, I couldn't find it. Where it just simply does all of the contractions and expansions between various swing points that are out there. And uh, and so it's, sometimes you get these uh, contractions and expansions between swing points that all converge at one area. Um, but what I found is that I found that it's a it's a great tool and guideline to understand what's going on between swing points, but it's not the be all to end all, which is why I started looking elsewhere because my I was losing more than I was winning. I'm like, hey, there's got to be something else here to understand. Uh, when to use it or how to integrate it into my other systems out here. Of course, that took me to the A to B equals CD pattern out here. So here's the here's one we took a look. This is because there's more than one A to B equals CD that's going on inside of the gold contract right now. But this is the larger one, and the larger one, like we looked at retracements, it, it, to overlook it would be basically pretty silly. Now, we use these as guidelines out here, uh, but still this says that price uh, is headed towards 1262. Yesterday got down to a low of 1267. Okay, five bucks, $1,300 instrument may be close enough. What does this pattern need in order to generate some type of completion? Well, one of the things that it's going to need is going to need a bullish reversal candle because price will just simply continue moving lower until 
the buyers uh, show up. So even on the A to B equals CD pattern, only 60% of the time are you going to get a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD. You'll notice when I draw my A to B equals CD patterns out there, you see the expansions. You see 1.272 or 1.618 or the 2.0 level because we don't know. We never know um, which a level price is going to target. And again, we use these as guidelines. And my experience has been, wait until the bulls show up. And that is what led to Japanese candlestick charting. Because looking at a blank chart like this, if you knew nothing about Japanese candlestick charting, you would know where the bullish reversal candle is. Now, today's is a bullish reversal candle. So it is a candidate for gold uh, forming a bottom. Now, if I just simply put an automated tool that I have out here, um, and this shows me the typical bullish or bearish reversal signals that I look for, you'll see that today is a bear sash candle. So you've got the A to B equals CD that is showing up. And so, uh, Peter, you know, if we, whichever swing points it might be that you would use, um, you know, here is at least a suggestion that there is going to be a bounce. The question is, is it a bounce or is it a uh, bottom out there? And uh, so what else do we want to see to suggest that, okay, maybe it is it is more of a bottom? Well, you and I are fortunate enough to go ahead and have our TAS market profiles, and those identify key levels of support or resistance. So when we put this on the chart, and just trying to put uh, as little as, as we need to on a chart to help us identify, what you can see is right now price, the gold contract, is trading back above the bottom of that profile that formed two days ago. So two days ago it formed price held. Yesterday was a close below. In fact, the bottom of the profile, 1277.20, was resistance. You're 1278.50. I don't know what the end of the day uh, close is going to look like. What I can say is if it uh, price closes below 1277.20, um, it would be dangerous to take that trade. In fact, you'd be looking more likely for price to go ahead and move lower. So that would be one of the things that I would be looking for, Peter, with regard to the potential A to B equal CD to the downside in some type of bullish reversal candle. I would really want to see price close above 1277.20. Now, if gold does that, closes above, it closes where it is right now, it's going to negate the TD setup nine count. The TD setup nine count requires today a close below 1276.80. Now, my concern about uh, the way that gold is trading right now is the mere fact that one price is below Stevie's red line. That's a 1282.70. Um, you'd like to see, now it could be in progression. Today could be the bullish reversal signal. Forget about the TD setup. Could close above the bottom of the box out there. But then what you want to see is you want to see price close above Stevie's red line. That's a 1282.80. Well, for goodness sakes, if the top of the box is 1285.50, you might as well wait for a close above that for your confirmation. If this is a bottom, that's really not going to be an issue out there versus it's just, just a little bit of a counter trend rally that is going on as we speak. So we, we don't ever know. But what I can say is you will increase your odds of buying the D point of an A to B equals CD pattern when you at least get a bullish reversal signal. You will improve your odds even more if you can understand where the market profiles are. You'll, under, you'll improve your odds even more if you understand where the oscillator and change line is. That's Stevie's green and red line out there. So I know that was kind of a long-winded answer. I didn't have anything really in the queue and uh, asked by someone in the den. If one person has a question, Others have that question, too. So in summary, has gold made a bottom? Um, if it forms a bullish reversal candle today and closes above the bottom of that profile, 1277.20, it may have. And if it closes above the top, 1285.50, then it probably has out there. So I hope that helps you out. Let's go to our next question out here. And this is from Jay in the den. And Jay wants to take a look at the Russell 2000. Jay, is it okay if I just pull over? 
the uh, Russell 2000 equity futures contract. I would prefer to do that. And if you give me your thumbs up, well, okay, cool. I'm going to anyways at this stage here, just because I've got the patterns drawn in here. It makes it a little bit easier. But what you were trying to identify was a level of resistance. And, uh, and yes, so this box here, this uh, black rectangular box was drawn in weeks ago. And what we can see today, Jay, is that price hit the top of that box. That's the um, that is the consolidation, and thus far has rejected it. Now I don't know what today's candle session is going to be. At 125, it's a doji. I mean, it, uh, today's price where it's trading right now is where the open was. Remember, for Stevie, dojis, dojis in my window have a ton of meaning at resistance. Kind of interesting meeting along the way. Uh, halfway markers. <laughs> Somebody go measure the percentage that a doji is a halfway marker, and you'll be like, eh, okay, that was just kind of interesting fodder out there. But in this case here, just simply asking, what do I think about the Russell 2000? It is at resistance. And the question you and I have is, hey, is it going to bust out there? In other words, if you were wanted to short the Russell 2000. Now is the time to do it. You get a close above the, uh, the consolidation, you're out. But this is your reward risk. Let's keep looking at this and the other indices when we get back from this break. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. So now I want to make sure why one thing was was clear out there. We were looking at the uh, Russell 2000 equity futures contract, its, its consolidation pattern, and because price was up at the top of it, I said, hey, if you wanted to go short, well, now would be the time because your your risk is, well, first you're always risking or you should risk or well, like 1% of your, your working capital and uh, your free working capital. And then, but but by 1%, it's, it's really understanding stop management positions size and so forth. I don't want to, I got too many questions to go into to that at this point. Uh, but uh, I didn't say go short. I just said if you were going to, I could totally get that by taking a look at that consolidation pattern. Now, with regard to where, because uh, there was a daily time frame chart we were looking at, where might price find support? Well, Jay hit the nail on the head there. It would be 1577, which is the top of the daily uh, box out here. Um, this is the June contract that I have up on my screen, uh, Jay, and it shows 1607.40 as the top of the weekly uh, box out there. I think that's a pretty good real resistance zone, even on a breakout of that consolidation pattern we looked at. So I would, in order to go long, a breakout of the consolidation, I would need to see a close above the 1607.40 level, as opposed to just where that top of the box was at basically 1600. Now, that's a different view than if I use my compositor synthetic version of the contract. Here on the right-hand panel, you'll see the weekly profiles are all the way down at the bottom. Which one is right? They're both right out here. And uh, we can just simply use the high from the trading day of February 25th at 16.07 and just say it price has got to close above that high in order for a breakout to occur. So the interesting thing, and uh, uh, the folks that have sent in, I'll make sure I get to your request, James, Hector, and Lee. But the interesting thing um, about the indices out here is we're at a we're at a really interesting point out here um, on the daily time frame charts. What do I mean by that is if we take a look at the NASDAQ composite, yesterday was day nine of the TD setup. Today was a slightly higher high, which would mean if tomorrow it's a higher high, then this pattern is is not a topping pattern. But we don't know that till tomorrow. But right now, there is a potential topping pattern in place for the very strong NASDAQ composite. I'm just going to go through this one by one. So you already know with the Russell 2000, we know that has a potential topping pattern. If we take a look at the semis, nice and strong, where are they at? They're in wave number seven. That's letter number G on my screen. Today looks like it's going to be day number eight of the setup, and day number eight can be a high. Of course, continued highs tomorrow could give us uh, day number nine of that TD setup as well as extend leg G. But the semis are at a point in time where there could be a top that is forming out here. Just using the tools you and I use, we can see the transports. They are also in wave number seven, and this is the day after the TD setup nine count. So today could be a high. Um, and when I say high, I'm not referring to like a like a, a major high, although you, you don't necessarily always know. Um, if we take a look at the spot volatility index, you're going to see well below its 50-day exponential moving average of 1437. So below that just says a high and a retracement or a pullback um, or what have you. If you take a look at the uh, Wilshire 5000, and so these are all the main core U.S. well indices out here stock indices where are we at we're wave number seven letter G inside the Wilshire 5000 potentially so that is topping formation worth worth paying attention to uh, the New York Stock Exchange see see all you folks that send me all that hate mail and say gosh Stevie's never a bear um, hey, take a look at the New York Stock Exchange from two different swing points. We are at wave number seven out here, let alone this little blue dash line that price has not been able to get above. And to me, that's a, a breakout level. Um, so you saw so the New York Stock Exchange, too. Uh, if we take a look at the NDX 100, well, what is it going to complete today? Day number nine of the TD setup nine count. Now, tomorrow could be a higher high, but it's close to that stage where there could be some type of pullback or retracement or even a top, even a top that could uh, take us into uh, September, October. Yeah, I know you heard it here first. So that is a possibility. Take a look back at the Russell 2000, back at your ranch here, Jay. Um, just letter F. So we're only in wave number six. But you and I know we've got that consolidation pattern that's working. 
Um, and so because of the consolidation pattern, you're trading a consolidation, you bust it out of the highs out there, that could be a topping pattern. Uh, if you take a look at the Dow Jones Industrials, well, price is moving higher, doing less relative energy. Today could be day eight. Day eight can be that high as well. So this is within topping signals. When the Dow Jones back in February made a high, it was what the setup nine count. When it made a low in March, it was with the setup nine count. Always worth paying attention to. Do they all work? No. Look at the ones back here in the January time frame. Uh, just lots of momentum. So when they don't work, it also provides you with pretty cool information. Nonetheless, right now, the Dow Jones Industrials shows potential topping signals, something that you and I are not going to ignore out here. And I don't want to be a broken record, but normally it's not this. Could it be this easy? Right? Isn't that the question? But all the euphoria and everything else that's out there, we just took a look at uh, uh, two, two, four, two, two, four, six, eight, now nine, 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 all of them, I don't make this stuff up, showing potential topping signals. Now, in the S&P 500, it's not there. So that's the, that's the interesting thing. The S&P 500, leg number six, letter F, uh, would would take until today's Wednesday. It would take till Friday to give you that seventh wave or G. No TD setup nine count out here or anything. So the S and P is the only one that is saying, "Hey, not so fast." So what that means is that what we have to do is we have to at least go take a look at the equity futures contract. What could override? the S&P cash indice. Well, for me, it would be the S&P futures contract. So if we go take a look at the futures contract, well, we can see that wave number seven, letter G, that was passed yesterday. So that doesn't exist. So in the S&P futures contract out here, there's also nothing that shows a topping signal just yet. Look, in a few days, we'll have a pretty good idea. Um, this is not the place where I would be adding to an index position um, just because of all those patterns uh, that are out there. So, uh, Jay, you kind of led me down a path unintentionally, but we wanted to talk about that anyways just to kind of get a feel for overall what are the messages of the markets and the indices uh, out here. Uh, so let's go to uh, one uh, uh, our, our email questions. The first one coming in from JJ. James writes in, he said, oh, and, okay. Hi, Steve. What do you think of SOX, S-O-X-X, -X, and the SMH? Would appreciate your analysis. So that's really going to be what we just looked at. Let's go back to it. You were really talking about the ETF. I prefer to use the indice, which we're going to, because I have you on email, and you can't argue with me. I can win that battle. Actually, I want to give you what you want. But here's the deal. Here's what I think. I would not be adding to a position today. You're in wave number seven. We pay attention to that letter out there. The day is going to be the eight count of that Tom DeMarc setup eight count. A top, if this pattern, that pattern were to come into fruition, you know, could take uh, place on a Friday, meaning not till Monday. Uh, hey, it looks bullish. Don't get me wrong. It's bullish. Okay. But that like that's like driving between here and Naples and back, which I'll do as soon as the show is over, and not using my, uh, you know, my ways system or my map system. I would never do that. I could be stuck in Alligator Alley for days. Don't want that. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190.
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at the semis. We're just going to complete this here for uh, James. And uh, James, the other pattern that we can see that's in play here is the A to B equals CD pattern. Price along the uh, C to D leg pretty much uh, following the, the same level of, of strength as was on that A to B leg out there. 1617 is the one to one. This may extend further. I did not say if you're long to sell. I said if you're long to be aware of uh, the mere fact that there are topping patterns that are in play. Uh, there is no bearish reversal candle or anything here. Uh, so you, you just, I just, what I said was I would not be adding to a position here inside the semis. Looks great and looks strong. Uh, when the bears show up, a reversal candle shows up, that's when you'll know that the bears are here. To try to tell you that they're going to show up at 16, 17, 81, in the old days, when I first started technical analysis, I would have told you that. And, and, and of course, you know, uh, I, I, and, and, and today I, I look in the mirror and say, God, oh, oh, oh. but look, you, you just know what you know, right? That's what, that's the coolest thing about what it is you and I do. You want to stay young, try to master these markets, right? L looking at the patterns that are out there, you know, there's patterns out here. I mean, these are nothing but traders that people made up of you and I, and we all have patterns. They're all emotional patterns that are out here, and they play over and over and over again out here. And anyways, enough about that. Let's go. Uh, let's try to get to the next question out here, which is about Snap. This one coming in from Hector. So let me get over to my three time frame charts. We'll go uh, read Hector's question. Let me change that on. Um, let me change this. Uh, my workspace so I can get to a, another set of tools out here. And uh, sorry that I didn't have that set up, but uh, hey, so be it. So we take a look at Snap. Crack. Oh, that's the wrong ticker symbol. That's an AP. Ah, oh, darn it. Sorry about that, folks. I usually uh, am smoother than this. All right, so let's go read Hector's question. Uh, the analysts are talking Snap down today. What does Steve O's tea leaves say about Snap's outlook for the next few months? 
I think it's going to 1455. What are your thoughts? So 1450, 1455. Okay, so you're looking for SNAP to continue moving higher out here. So here's the issue with SNAP today, uh, Hector. Now, and this is going to be, you're going to know if you're right or not right real quickly out here. And what do I mean by that? If we take a look at SNAP, and we just simply utilize our TAS market profiles, and we go back into that December 20, so it did form the bottom, snap, crackle, and pop on uh, December 21st out here. One of the things you'll notice out here, Hector, is that price has held the bottom of the daily profiles. And so I would say a change in trend, and those analysts would be correct, if you see SNAP close below 1109. Otherwise, today was a buying opportunity as it was when price was testing the bottom of the box on March 20th or when price was testing the bottom of a box on March the 7th out there, testing support, or when when price was testing, in essence, the bottom of the box on January 16th and the 17th out here. The bottoms of those boxes were buying areas. Is today, it is at this stage, unless we see something else that says, ah, she's Maybe not. Okay, let's go take a look and see if we can find the, uh, geez, maybe not. But right now, Hector, what's the coolest thing about this, whether it's today, tomorrow, as long as this daily profile is out here, if you see a close below 1109, then you'll change your mind about 1455. I'm cool with 1455 because there's no reason to change your mind just yet. If we take a look at the weekly profile, it's going to make us say, ah, oh, geez. Okay, because price today, it's a brand new weekly profile was hit. It's bullish, sort of bullish in structure. We'll go bullish to neutral, but 1228 was the top of its box. It's resistance so far. 1229, the top of the daily box. That's resistance. Okay, so now we really, you really, as you may be in SNAP, need to be watching that 1109 area. There's no profile for the monthly time frame out here. If we take a look at SNAP, uh, and what we can see out here is price was moving higher, doing less relative energy on April the 9th. And on April the 12th, you got a bearish reversal candle. And so this is saying there could be a significant top. Now, on this chart, the significant top would come as a result of a close below the March 29th session, the low, which is 1058 out there. Yeah, 1058 is the number. So that's another place to be looking. But this says, okay, I can see what, if you're asking me as an analyst, I would say, oh, all right, we got to be careful here because of the topping signals that are present, price and below Stevie's green line, and it's rejected the top of both a daily and a weekly profile. But hold your horses. The proof in the pudding would be a close below 1109. That's really all that I see out here when I take a look at the daily time frame, daily and weekly charts. I won't put the other ones up on my screen right now because it's not going to provide us with any other useful information. So thanks for writing in. I hope that helps you out uh, and uh, have a great uh, day. Uh, LB Lee writes in. Oh, we've got some others that have come in, too. He says, uh, I'm in uh, GBTC. Let's go take a look at GBTC. I think that's the Bitcoin Trust out here. Uh, Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. Is the rally over? Should I hold on for more? Um, is the rally over? Let's look at this. So here's what you know right now. Um, I'm going to change to my other system, too. GBTC. From a daily weekly profile standpoint, price is pulled back below the top of that box, 709. You'd love to see price close over 709 today. If it doesn't, price could easily pull back to 650, even 572. I'm not in that camp just yet, um, but uh, the 650 certainly would be a uh, game, as well as 618. That's the top of the weekly box. But otherwise, it looks, uh, looks pretty good so far. Let's look at the daily time frame chart out here. And uh, Lee, see if there's anything to be concerned about. Well, just happens to be when Bitcoin made its high out here, which was on April 11th, it was with that Tommy DeMarc set up nine count. Now, price is pulled back to test Stevie's green line. That's what it's doing today as we speak. Closing below that would also say a further retracement. You're saying is the rally over. Remember, pulling back to support is not does not mean the rally is over. It may mean you don't want to stomach it. But support here is going to be 572 as a level out there. So I don't know. You said you're in at 550. You know, that's pretty good gains. I'm not saying sell, but I am saying you've got a topping signal out here. And then price yesterday, 
I got up but didn't get over and didn't close over that session, you know, what's that telling you? Um, if I do wave counts just for the heck of it out here, now made the bottom the way that should with that Rhodes momentum indicator back in February. Uh, and so then yesterday, with just that slightly higher high that it made was wave number seven. That's letter G. How's that happen out here? So just be careful. You're in, have a stop. Where should your stop be? Look, the average true range on this uh, uh, ETF is 48 cents. So your stop ought to be 48 cents times 1.272 or 1.618. I'd prefer the 1.618 level because anything that trades on an expansion, here's another place, Peter, where we can use the expansion of Fibonacci, would say maybe there's something more serious going on. Especially now you've got a TD set up nine count, you've got wave number seven. Just be cautious, just have a stop. Just have a rolling stop in place. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Be right back. Dow's off 42. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002 when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the gold report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. And uh, Michael, the answer to your question is yes. Well, what was Michael's question out here? Michael's question was, I want to take a look at ticker symbol LGORF. That's Largo Resorts Limited. And his question was basically, was yesterday's candle session a bullish engulfing candle? And the answer is yes. Now, when you, if we take a look at, you can see the prior day's body, small body candle. Um, yesterday's open was below the close of that session. So 
yesterday's candle engulfed the entire body of the candle. Michael, everybody else that's out there, when we take a look at a bullish or bearish engulfing candle, well, a bullish engulfing candle, you have to have a trend to the downside. This has that. And then you have to engulf, you have to completely cover uh, the uh, body of the prior candle. In this case here, this engulfed the last two trading sessions out there, so even a little bit stronger. Now, if we put our daily profiles out here, what you're going to see is that today, price found resistance at the top of that box, 136. Why is that important? Because if, uh, and this was, this was not the question that Michael asked, but I'm going to go ahead and, and answer this question in case he was interested. Does, does that mean that yesterday was a bottom? Could be out here with regard to this ticker symbol. Why? Well, if you take a look at this daily chart, what you're going to see is that yesterday was that setup nine count. So, and we're trading just above Stevie's red line. Okay. So what do you need in order to suggest that this is a bottom? Well, geez, since it's gone up and tested the top of that box at 136, a close above that would be nice. That would be a suggestion. Now, as we come down and we take a look at the uh, weekly and the uh, monthly time frame, the weekly says, you know, you got to be careful. No bullish reversal signal here, and you're below the bottom of the profile. But the monthly says, hey, I went ahead and tested support. That was the white solid line there at a buck 25 out here. So I would say, Michael, if you're in it or you're looking to get in it, you get a close above 136, I think you're on to something. So, yes, yesterday was a bullish engulfing candle. Folks, thanks so much for being here. Stay tuned. Your favorite polar bear, David White, he's up next. Tom O'Brien, back from China. Back from Asia, I'll be with you. I'm assuming he's awake. Although, man, that is a, a killer, killer jet lag out there. In any event, he should be here from 3 to 5. I'll be back with you tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Have a great Wednesday. Take care.